Well, the Python problem is getting closer and closer to home here in Central Florida. We told you at 10 how the apex predators are getting closer to our home here. Officials in Florida quietly launched a secret project pouring millions into a last ditch effort. They sent hundreds of robotic rabbits into the heart of the Everglades. Each machine was built to mimic a live rabbit from its body heat to its unique scent, all to trap the pythons that have destroyed the ecosystem. But the swamp doesn't follow human rules. The robots worked too well. They didn't just find the pythons, they found something else. And what happened next is frankly insane. When the glades began to vanish at sunrise, the Florida Everglades glows like a living mirror. You see, it's a world of shimmering sawgrass over slow moving water where herons stand as still as statues. Yet beneath that staggering beauty lies one of the most devastated ecosystems in America. For decades, this vast wilderness, a shallow river of grass spanning 1.5 million acres, has been under a silent and coiling attack. The invader isn't a chemical spill or a new development. It's alive, it's hungry, and it has proven to be, to put it mildly, unstoppable. The Burmese python, a predator born in the jungles of Southeast Asia, has turned Florida's wetlands into its own personal empire. The thing nobody tells you is that this invasion wasn't an act of nature. It was a human mistake, born from the exotic pet trade in the 1980s and 90s. Baby pythons were sold as harmless curiosities, glossy, beautifully patterned, and small enough to rest in a child's hands. But those pets grew and they grew fast. Within a few short years, many reached staggering lengths of 15 to 20 feet, powerful enough to overpower a deer or even a six-foot alligator. Owners, completely unprepared for a monster in their guest room, began releasing them into canals and swamps. Then, in 1992, Hurricane Andrew tore through South Florida. The storm destroyed countless reptile breeding facilities, releasing an unknown number of pythons into the wild. Those escaped snakes seeded the population that would later engulf the Everglades. For a python, this new world was paradise. The Everglades offered warmth, endless water, and most importantly, prey that had never evolved to fear a giant constrictor. With no natural predators of their own and the shocking ability to lay up to 100 eggs at a time, their population exploded. Biologists now estimate that tens of thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands, roam South Florida. What they've done to the food web is catastrophic. In areas where pythons are dominant, there has been a near total disappearance of raccoons, opossums, and marsh rabbits. We're talking populations dropping by over 90%. One large python was found with an adult deer inside its stomach. In another famous incident, a python was filmed fighting an alligator, a battle so intense that both animals perished in the struggle. The loss of these species creates a chain reaction. Fewer small mammals mean less food for native birds of prey. Fewer scavengers mean decaying matter lingers, altering the very soil. The fight against them has been a long losing battle. Officials first turned to the public launching the Python Challenge in 2013. It was a massive media event, a call to arms for anyone brave enough to step into the swamp. Cash prizes, public glory, and the thrill of the hunt. They came with airboats, machetes, and flashlights, but after weeks of effort, the combined haul totaled just 68 snakes, 68 out of tens of thousands. It was a PR stunt, not a solution. They moved on to a more professional strategy, the Python Elimination Program. This wasn't a contest, it was a job. Paid licensed hunters patrol the levees at night, getting an hourly wage plus bonuses for every snake. But the math is brutal. It costs millions to pay contractors to hunt over a massive area, and for every snake they remove, two more seem to take its place. They even tried Judas snakes, fitting female pythons with radio trackers to lead hunters to breeding grounds. It helped, but it wasn't enough. The Everglades was just too big. The state realized brute force was a failing game. They needed a hunter that didn't use its eyes from paws to prototypes. When the bounty programs failed to make a dent, wildlife managers realized they needed a new kind of hunter. They needed one that didn't rely on sight or luck, but on an ancient, powerful instinct. That's when Florida turned to an ally as old as humanity itself, the dog. In recent years, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission launched a small but daring experiment. Two dogs trained like elite detectives would be sent into the swamps to do what humans could not smell the invisible. Their names were Truman and Eleanor. Truman, a black Labrador, had the friendly face of a family pet. Eleanor, a Dutch Shepherd with sharp, alert eyes, was bred for precision. 
For months, they were trained to recognize the faint, musky odor that Burmese pythons leave behind, a scent humans can't detect at all, but which lingers in the grass and mud long after the snake has passed. Once in the field, the results came fast. In their first few months, the duo helped capture several large snakes that had eluded human crews for weeks. Truman's tail would stiffen, Eleanor would circle, nose low, and suddenly freeze, the universal sign that prey was near. Moments later, a handler's flashlight beam would catch the slow ripple of scales. These dogs were finding pythons in minutes where biologists had searched for hours. But, as with everything in the Everglades, success came at a price. The swamp is a tough place to work. The heat is extreme, often topping 100 degrees Fahrenheit with crushing humidity. The dogs had to wear cooling vests and special boots to protect their paws from the sharp sawgrass. And of course, the area is full of other dangers, like alligators and venomous cottonmouths. What many overlooked, however, was the real problem, scale. Truman and Eleanor were amazing, but they were only two dogs. The Everglades, remember, is 1.5 million acres. To cover that much ground, the state would need hundreds of dog teams, costing millions upon millions in training and support. It was a brilliant tool, but it wasn't the final solution. This victory, however, sparked a new and controversial question. The dogs proved that scent was the key. So what if the bait could attract the snakes to the hunters? This led scientists down an unsettling path, one that blurred the line between biology and desperation. They began small, controlled studies using live marsh rabbits, the python's natural prey. They built secure pens, designed to protect the rabbits from any direct attack, and placed them in high-traffic swampy trails. The rabbits, terrified but unharmed, became magnets. Within weeks, pythons began appearing, one after another slithering toward the enclosures. The principle was proven. Prey attraction worked, but the moral cost was high. The images of trembling live rabbits surrounded by giant constrictors sparked immediate outrage from animal welfare groups. The experiments were labeled as cruel. Under immense public pressure, the funding for live bait trials was pulled. The program was shut down. They couldn't use live animals, so they decided to build one. When the gators arrived, this is where the story truly gets weird. With the live bait program finished, engineers and biologists teamed up. They had the blueprint. They knew what a python wanted, the heat of a small mammal, the scent of its fur, and the slight twitch of life. So they started building. The project was called the Robo Rabbit. Each decoy was a marvel of practical design, built from weather-resistant materials and coated in synthetic fur. Inside, a special thermal pad emitted a constant heat signature, nearly identical to a living marsh rabbit's 99-degree body temperature. Tiny, battery-powered emitters released a chemical compound that mimicked rabbit musk, a scent that could drift on the swamp breeze. Some models even had tiny motors to make their ears and nose twitch. They were, in effect, perfect bait. Each one cost nearly $4,000 to build. Hidden within was a motion-triggered camera and a transmitter. Whenever something slithered close, the system would activate, sending an alert to biologists stationed miles away. And to power it all, small, efficient solar panels, allowing them to operate for weeks. The plan was simple. They anchored 120 of these robotic rabbits inside protective pens in known python hotspots. The goal wasn't to harm the snakes directly, but to lure them into monitored zones where trained teams could move in and remove them. When the first units were deployed, no one knew if it would work. The first two days were a stunning success. The alert started pinging almost immediately. Field cameras captured incredible footage, massive pythons, some over 15 feet long, approaching the decoys. They flicked their tongues, sensing the heat and smell. Then they struck, coiling their massive bodies around the fake rabbits. The teams moved in and captured snake after snake. It was working. And then, day three happened. An alert came in from a decoy near a deep water canal. The biologist watching the feed expected a python. Instead, the camera showed a dark, log-like shape moving fast, a 12-foot alligator. The gator wasn't confused. It was drawn by the same sensory triggers. It saw a warm, struggling animal. In one violent explosion of water, the alligator charged the pen and crushed the $4,000 robot in a single bite. The robots, it turned out, were the perfect lure for everything. The thing nobody tells you is that pythons and alligators are ancient enemies. They compete for food and territory. Now, humans had just dropped hundreds of flashing dinner bells all over their shared hunting grounds. 
What happened next was the insane part. A new predator war began. The alligators, learning that these were easy, if unsatisfying, meals, began hunting the robots. They destroyed dozens of them. The pythons, in turn, sensing the massive alligators, started avoiding the traps entirely. The project was, to put it mildly, a complete disaster. The project was failing and the expensive machines were being destroyed, but the robots had a secret. Hacking the invasion. Scientists and officials were ready to pull the plug. The robotic rabbit army had failed. Millions of dollars were being crunched in the jaws of alligators. But a young data analyst on the team noticed something strange. The robots weren't just decoys, they were spies. Before being destroyed, each robot's motion sensor, thermal imager, and camera recorded everything that passed by. They weren't just logging python attacks, they were logging python movements. They tracked the time of day, the temperature, and the direction of travel. What many overlooked was that by cross-referencing the data from all 120 units, especially the ones that weren't attacked, a pattern emerged. They built a digital, three-dimensional map of the swamp's predator movements, and the data showed something they had never seen before. The pythons weren't just randomly slithering through the million-plus acres. They were using highways, specific hidden corridors in the water and sawgrass to move between hunting grounds. And the alligators? They used them, too. This is where the story goes from strange to something out of a science fiction movie. It gets even crazier. The scientists took all that data, every twitch, every failed hunt, every robotic rabbit lost, and they fed it into a powerful learning AI. The AI started chewing on the numbers looking for deep patterns humans could never see. And it found one. The AI began to predict not just where the pythons were, but where they would be at specific times. Why? Because it had learned what the pythons feared. The AI figured out that the pythons were moving in precise, deliberate patterns to avoid their only natural predator, the alligators. The robots hadn't just found a few snakes. They had stumbled backward into something huge. They had accidentally mapped the pythons' entire secret social calendar. They had decoded their movements, their fears, and their hidden schedules. They had found the pythons' secret weakness. Armed with this new ghost map, the hunters got a new playbook. The entire strategy shifted overnight. No more sitting and waiting at decoy sites, hoping a snake would wander by. That was old news. Instead, they used the AI's pinpoint predictions to go on the offensive. They could intercept the snakes on their secret highways, the hidden routes they used when they thought nothing was watching. The results were immediate and staggering. They weren't finding one snake at a time. They were finding groups. The AI, by tracking the specific movements of the large, mature females, did the unthinkable. It led the hunters directly to the source. It took them to the breeding grounds. These were massive, completely hidden nests, places buried deep in the swamp that no human would have ever found on their own. They found dozens of females and thousands upon thousands of eggs. The numbers were almost unbelievable. In just one month, using this new AI map, the hunters removed more invasive pythons than they had in the entire previous year of the bounty program. All that failure, all those destroyed robots, it was all worth it. The robotic rabbits, even as they were being crushed, had succeeded beyond anyone's wildest dreams. They hadn't just helped the fight, they had changed the entire war. They had hacked the invasion. So, did Florida's high-tech experiment just create a new breed of super snake? What do you think they should try next? Let us know your thoughts below. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more insane stories.